is what would you do if they brought the power grid down? And by they, I mean if the government purposefully brought the power grid down. And I'm not asking that question for fun. I'm asking that question because the World Economic Forum um, is predicting that a cyber pandemic, you can look this up, they've been running exercises about it this year, um, is inevitable. You're probably saying, what is a cyber pandemic? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, what are, what are we even talking about? Well, first of all, the reason I'm even paying attention to the World Economic Forum and their exercises is because they notoriously, in 2019, ran an exercise for a coronavirus pandemic that oddly all became true. I mean, without one slight difference, they said that uh, the coronavirus was going to escape from a wet market in South America. Of course, when the coronavirus uh, swept the nation, uh, swept the world in 2020, they said that it escaped from a wet market in China. You can still look that up, by the way. That's not a conspiracy theory. Um, that uh, they simulated that coronavirus pandemic. It was the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in collaboration with John Hopkins University. And um, the website is still up and they say, you know, a, the coronavirus pandemic is inevitable. And then boom, it happened the very next year. So uh, people say it's a conspiracy theory to believe that they knew that the coronavirus pandemic was going to happen. You don't have to believe it was a conspiracy theory or you can believe it wasn't a conspiracy theory. It's up to you. I don't really care. The point is, is that they made the prediction, they called it inevitable, and then it happened immediately. So for me personally, that signals to me that I should probably pay attention the next time the World Economic Forum makes a prediction and calls it inevitable. And lo and behold, they are predicting that a coronavirus pandemic, uh, a cyber pandemic, pardon, is going to happen and that it is once again inevitable. So if you look into the exercise that they have run this year, I believe they run it in July. Um, they've been meeting and talking about the cyber pandemic, what it would look like essentially, uh, their idea is that they're going to have to sanitize the internet uh, because a bug, think of it as, as like a coronavirus for your computer, um, is going to sweep globally. And the only way they're going to be able to stop this bug from infecting everything is to effectively shut down the internet, right? And they were talking about bringing down the power grid in an effort to do this. So imagine the government bringing down the power grid and you would not have access to anything um, that required an electrical charge. World Economic Forum had conducted a simulation of that very event, a cyber attack that brings the global financial system to its knees. Now, where else did we see a simulated event that predicted a global pandemic? I don't know if you guys know this, but Event 21, which happened in October of 2019, which was uh, before the world fell to their knees because of the beer flu pandemic, this occurred, and this was also a simulation. Um, I'm not going to get into this, but I will leave this resource here in the description of this video. Down here, though, guys, this was put on by John Hopkins University, the World Economic Forum, and none other than the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let me just bring up another page with regards to this. So here are some photos from the event. View some photos from Event 201 Pandemic Tabletop Exercise held on October 18th, 2019 in New York, New York. And so um, even just to scroll through here, you guys can see it, it was a panel and they were basically discussing what could happen if the world saw a global pandemic. Coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, less than half a year later, most of the world was locked down because of a global pandemic. All right, so should we be worried? Uh, let me play you guys this clip. Now this is directly from the World Economic Forum's website, weforum.org, uh, and this was just uh, published in January of this year, and they talk about a cyber attack with beer flu-like characteristics. Listen to this. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our economies and societies to the core. and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus. Its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history, the 2003 Slammer Sapphire Worm, doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds, infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Let me just put things into perspective for you guys. That was in 2003. Uh, fast forward to 2021, think of how many more computers and uh, devices like smartphones are in people's hands today versus in 2003. Let me continue. Fortunately, at least until now, 
cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages, and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives, have been equal and sometimes even greater. You see, the only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars, and that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. So are these guys just warning us of a cyber pandemic, or is there something that uh, perhaps intelligence agencies around the world know that we're not privy to yet? Again, they talk about an example of disconnecting from the internet for a whole 24 hours. Could you imagine if the world went offline for 24 hours straight? In a lot of cases, that would be devastating for many people around the world, even just on a personal level. But, uh, you know, especially when they talk about things such as transport, healthcare, essential services, right? The world is so reliant on connectivity. And, uh, you know, especially in this emerging economy, our cryptocurrency on exchanges, the way we send money to and from each other's crypto wallets, for example, will all rely on the internet and connectivity. Again, maybe another reason why you might want to keep your cryptocurrency in cold storage. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk. So is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. They even state in here, the beer flu we anticipated was something that was going to happen, i.e. the simulation that occurred at Event 201. We should be ready for something that could be a lot more devastating, namely a cyber pandemic. And uh, I just want to play you guys this quick clip uh, of Klaus Schwab discussing this from back in July of 2020. This was a clip that I included in one of my videos from back in November, but I thought it was poignant, so uh, let me just play you guys this real quick. But still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. To use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. Grace here. Welcome to another video where I want to give you some tips on what you can do to prepare yourself for the unexpected. Now recently in the media there has been lots of talk about a potential cyber attack that could cause the whole worldwide power grid to crash which would mean you'll be left without electricity, no fresh running water, no gas and so on. And that's a pretty serious thing because most of us in the world today are dependent on the system to meet our basic needs. For example, water, food, heat and so on and so on. If that was to crash, how many of us could survive independently for a month or two? Not many, and that should cause us to fear because something crazy is looming. We don't know when it could happen, maybe in a year's time, two years, five years, we don't know. But we know that we are on the verge of a disaster and you just want to be prepared just in case the unexpected happens. Now, if something was to go down, one of the first things that you would need to survive is water evidently water is life now how many of us live close to fresh running stream water not many of us do you know thankfully i'm in switzerland we have fresh water all over i have a waterfall close to where i live which is good 
but for those who don't you want to have a simple water filtering system that you can use to get water from a lake or a stream and you're not too sure if it's clean what you want to have on hand is a simple water filtering system and one thing that i can recommend which is easy to get at this moment i've got this on amazon is a water filter bottle this filters over 99.9 percent .9 of bacteria and parasites and it filters as you drink it has a two filter layering system so you have this straw here which filters the water and some carbon charcoal filter as well and you can pretty much use any form of water even dirty stream water and it will filter it and you can drink it and this will keep you going for a while so and you just replace the filter i have a couple of these filters here at home i used to use this when i used to go camping and yeah it's just something you want to have just in case you know something crazy happens another thing as well is that you want to have good food i'm not just talking about dead packet food you also want to make sure you have access to some form of fresh raw fruits or vegetables and that's not practical for many people however what you can do which everyone can do whether you live in the country or in a city or in a flat an apartment what you can do is sprout you can sprout beans you can sprout seeds alfalfa seeds broccoli seeds and sprouting is so simple and so easy to do I used to do this quite often a few years ago when I was going through my raw phase and I stopped but now I'm trying to get back into it. So I recently just bought this um, filtering container here. It's quite cheap, you can get it for about 15 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 dollars and so on. And you just invest in some seeds. You can stock up on these kinds of seeds like mug seeds, um, alfalfa seeds, broccoli seeds. And within three or four days, you can have sprouts ready to eat. And sprouts is so nutritious. It's rich in protein, um, vitamin E, vitamin K, like you're having your fresh raw veg, you know. So it's something you definitely want to keep in your home. You can get something like this, or you can get some of these jars, like these filtering jars with this mesh container here and just sprout your seeds and yeah really good really nutritious i highly recommend it another thing you want is to be able to cook simple foods have simple foods and certain foods you want to have are foods again that are rich in nutrition now one particular food that i do recommend is buckwheat buckwheat is so rich it's rich in zinc it's rich in protein high in fiber magnesium and so on it's basically like a complete food and it's very quick and easy to cook it's like a, a fruit grain and you can have it ready within 15 minutes so you want to have I believe you should stock up on a few things like this, like you can have your buckwheat, you can have quinoa, couscous and so on. Just in case something happens, you do have certain foods that you can eat. Now, of course, how are you going to cook those foods? Now, you can sprout buckwheat, but it doesn't taste very good. I've done it before. So you might want to cook it. And when you cook it, you can have it ready within 10, 15 minutes. So what you want to invest in is like a portable camping stove i used to use this when i used to go camping you buy your gas containers it's quite cheap you can get a box of these just keep it in your home just in case and if you don't have access to your stove no electricity you can use this very easy to use go on the internet and then you put your pots on top of this thing here and then you cook one thing you might want to invest in as well is simple pots like these. These are like camping stones. They're very light as well. So I have this. I just keep this if I'm to go camping or something unexpected happens. So you can cook, you know, foods without using your electrical stove. So these are things you just want to have just in case. Another thing I recommend as well is canning, being able to can your fruits and veg because we are now entering into winter so there's not going to be many things growing on the trees so what you can do is learn how to can so someone has canned this for me i don't know how to can i need to learn myself 
but these is like um like tomato chutneys um courgettes and so on so they can like all these little sauces so this is something that we need to learn to do is just can a few jars of fruits and vegetables just to have to hand just in case if, you know something happens and you can do this even if you're not in the country it's just being prepared and being ready another thing as well that you might want to have is like candles you know you need light you can have your matches and i have this little lighter here so just have these little things ready you know just in case something happens and you find yourself out of gas or electricity for a week, two weeks, a month, we don't know. But I just think it's important to just prepare as much as you can. Now, I know the time is coming soon where we'll have to probably run to the mountains like the Waldens is. But in the meantime, before that grand final crisis happens, I believe there'll be little inconveniences we may find ourselves in. So you just wanna be ready for those little inconveniences in case any of those things were to go down and that's the end of this video um, if there's anything else I missed that you think might be useful to have in the home please share them in the comments below and god willing you will see or hear from me in the next video take care and god bless